Hey, what's happening? You're watching Toonami TV. This is the day after. The reflection review of the match between Newcastle United and Leeds United. It finished 1-1 in the end at St James's Park last night. And this video is where I sit down and just talk about what I've just watched. Give a fair, balanced view of the match. And if you have your own opinions, please don't forget to jot them down below in the comment section. I will uh, reply to each and every one of them. Can I please bring your attention to the match day vlog as well? That's already up. I was at the game last night. I'm at all of the home games. I vlog each and every one of them. And I am also doing Wofford away as well. So make sure that you look out for that one next Sunday. And please be sure to you know, subscribe to this channel. Hit the like button on both the match day vlog and this vlog. It really does uh, go a long way in terms of helping the channel grow. Anyway, getting on with the game. Starting lineup. I was a little bit surprised that Hayden again was playing, you know, as sort of a back five when really in reality he should be in the midfield where he does his defensive work. He does like to get forwards. He's no good really uh, playing at centre back when Steve Bruce is only going to criticise him after you know the Manchester United game. Yet he then plays him. But uh, in terms of the side, a few pick outs like Joe Linton for me. I don't think should have started. I believe it should have been Dwight Gale from the very get go. If you want to win then Dwight Gale is probably your only intelligent striker that we've got behind Callum Wilson. When he's injured, he should be playing because he's the type of player who you know likes to get into the box. He'll try and make something happen, whereas Joe Linton doesn't really do that. And that was evident in the match last night. But um, So yeah, like looking back you know, at the first half, I felt it was the majority of Leeds. They started the brighter. They had... Their best chance, which was that goal in reality. Uh, so that was Rafinha. He crossed it into the box and it eluded everyone. Rafinha, as he put the ball in, Rodrigo dummied it and Darla couldn't quite get to the um, the cross. Jamal Asales, for me, should do better. He's got to read that situation and he's got to clear his lines. He doesn't. Darla mentions that on NUFC TV, that Darla should have got close and he didn't. And Darlow sees that last minute. I'm not going to blame Darlow whatsoever for the goal because, as I said, it was a last minute thing and it did skid off the service, which made it even harder for Darlow to get any sort of connection, you know, with that cross. And with Rodrigo dumbing it, then it was harder for, you know, Darlow to do anything with it. Off to the worst possible start. We knew going into the game that it was going to be protest central, fans against Steve Bruce as usual. Likewise, myself, I don't want him at the football club. Uh, Bruce out, Bruce out. And it just got worse because the way we started, it was lethargic. Um, too many sidewards, pack backwards football. Not really. There's no real desire of getting forwards. Um, it really took until at least the, the 20th minute onwards for the lads to wake up and try and get into the game. Leeds were having chances. But, um, you know, we did, you know, force some saves from Melier. Uh, the first one coming from Joe Linton. He hits uh, a shot straight at Melier when the ball is put into the box. He should do better for me. And it is a good save uh, by Melier, uh, the Leeds goalkeeper. And then the next one is Matt Ritchie. He has a shot which then hits off the inside of the left-hand post. Very unlucky there. The keeper is beating all ends up. Should he do better? I'll let you judge that one. And then we finally get a chance at an equaliser through Alan St. Maximin. Um, he picks up the ball. Uh, on our left hand side leads his right hand side and he literally just keeps running he makes it run into the box there's at least seven or eight leads uh, players in that box and not one of them uh, goes to make a challenge likewise for their equaliser uh, sorry likewise for Leeds' uh, opening goal uh, Tim Maximin uh, somehow as he's going wider and wider and wider uh, picks out a spot and yeah he fires it past uh, Melier could he do better? You would say so. The Leeds defensive can't do better in that situation. I'd be fuming uh, if that was us. But uh, we managed to get it to 1-1. Uh, Leeds go up the other end. The minute we go up 1-1, they could easily have been 2-1 up. Fupo, I think that's his name. He picks up the ball. Uh, he puts a ball into the box for Rafinha. He tries his luck. And it falls to Fupo after a, a, a Leeds player managed to retrieve the ball off uh, Rafinha. And yeah, he somehow puts it over the crossbar. You know, we're at sixes and sevens at the back. Just no one communicating uh, yet again and Leeds somehow fired over the crossbar and for me it's the miss of the night. 
Uh, he's got to score that. And if Leeds go 2 1 up, I think they deserve it. They could easily have been 3 or 4 1 up. Uh, I thought Mike Dean in that first half, I'll actually throw out the game. I thought he was poor, uh, the referee. Uh, some of the decisions that he was making were just diabolical. Um, but then again, you can't expect anything less from him uh, as a referee. You're thinking, right, okay, 1 1, Steve Bruce is going to give him a bulgan despite the equaliser. But second half, it was again flat. There wasn't really a great deal happening. Uh, Leeds. I think I was more disappointed with them because they didn't really kick on from there. They used all their energy up in that first half. They started to tie out towards half time, and the game plan was probably just to see out the point. It's probably a better point for Leeds because they're on the road. Uh, whereas for us, you know, we've got to do more really than just um, have the odd attack, and that's what happened in the second half. Uh, say Maxman did draw a save from Melier. Um, he pulled off a decent save. Uh, went for a corner. Nothing come of it. But I was so questionable if there was uh, Steve Bruce substitutions. Like, I mean, two centre-backs, really, rather than, you know, your centre-forward in Dwight Gale, who really should have been starting the game. Joe Linton, for me, didn't do a great deal in that match whatsoever. Yes, OK, he holds the ball up, but that's not what his job is. His job is to be a striker, act as a striker, get into the box and make something happen. And unfortunately, we didn't see that anywhere near enough in the match, and uh, it was all too comfortable for you know, leads in that second half. As said, they were hoping just to come away with at least a point or hit one the counter attack and come away with all three. They'll be kicking themselves because there was a chance for them to have won that game yesterday. Uh, we could have done with a bit more imagination from the manager, but as said, if he's only going to bring on the legs of um, the Emil Kraft and the likes of Jacob Murphy, defensive type players, then unfortunately you're not going to do anything in terms of trying to get your, your winning goal. And it's for me, it's frustrating because if Dwight Gale had played, I'm not suggesting that he might have won with the game, but there would have been a better chance of winning the game with an actual recognised striker. And for me, Joe Linton's not a striker by what I see of him. Uh, £40 million pounds waste of time. And as said, that's what my frustration is You know, with uh, Steve Bruce. The fact of how we set up and how we go at teams, how defensive we are at home, and just the lack of creativity in the final third. And when we do try something in the final third, it's always a failure. And... We're in the relegation zone for a reason. Yes, OK, we moved up one place into 18th place on two points. But, you know, dropping silly points at home, it's not going to help because, And they say if you want to stay in the Premier League, you have to win your home games. You have to try and find a way of grinding out results. And we could have done that in the second half. But for me, we just didn't create anywhere near enough. And what makes me laugh is that Steve Bruce come out in his press conference yesterday on NUFC TV. Give it a watch for yourself. And he said that he enjoyed the game. It was exciting to watch. Well, if he thinks Droma Leeds United or any side of home's acceptable and funny or exciting, whatever you want to say, it's not. That just goes to tell how much we've declined as a football club because I walked out of that stadium yesterday frustrated because as much as I went for a Leeds United win, in that second half, Leeds were there for the taking and we didn't heed the warnings. Uh, we didn't really get at them. We didn't really do anywhere near enough uh, to warrant the three points. I would say we're probably lucky in the end to come away with a point, but then looking back at the chances that were had, I'll take it. I think we'll probably deserve it. Um, I said it was probably a game of two halves leads. You know, had their chances in the first half where they could have been out of sight. And then second half, we did grow into it, but again, didn't do anywhere near enough. And if you don't do enough with the football, then you're not going to score goals and you're not going to get three points. And that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, we've played three home games already and we've only picked up two points from them. In reality, we should be on about five or six points and we're sat in the relegation zone and it's only going to get worse before it gets better. It just goes to prove like the lack of investment as well is really worrying and that's why it's catching up on us. Uh, the likes of Joe Willock haven't really you know, settled into the side ever since signing that new deal. It seems to be a curse on the club, isn't it? It happened uh, you know, with the likes of Kennedy where it just didn't work out for him. But I hope Joe Willock can somehow find some sort of rhythm. I do believe, in my opinion, that Steve Bruce needs to change the formation because, like I say, it's not working. We need to be more positive in games. Like they said under Kevin Keegan, I don't mind conceding two or three goals as long as we score four or five. Do you know what I'm saying? A bit like what Leeds are, open, more positive, you know, going for it. And I said, I think Leeds have got a lot of injuries and that's why they probably stopped you know, playing at such a high intensity as they did for probably the first 20 minutes, 25 minutes, they started to tire out and that, that showed uh, in the match. But uh, I said it's all about taking the initiative and we didn't, unfortunately. And uh, Leeds, I said in the end, were probably comfortable for a point. They, I said they will probably look at that and think two points dropped. But then likewise, we could say the same because, you know, we had our chances. Um, 
I said things have still got to improve. Like we're still, you know, not great at the back. And I said we're not great, you know, up front either. The midfield, it's dead as a fart, isn't it? Flat as a pancake, nothing really happening. And yeah, it's not helping when there's legs of bust ups, you know, on the training ground between Dwight Gale and Graham Jones. I don't know if that's why Dwight Gale didn't play, but you know, you've got to take that aside. You know, we're in a situation now where we need points on the board. The likes of Dwight Gale need to be starting these games, not you know, bringing on defensive players just to try and set up a one one draw Leeds United at home. And by the way, not for one of my disrespecting Leeds United, I'm just saying when you're at home, you've got to be looking to get the three points, and that's the bread and butter. You know, if staying in the Premier League, as boring and cliche as that sounds, uh, that's where we are as a football club. It's all about just staying in the Premier League, and um, we're not even doing that at the minute. And as I said, the table doesn't lie. Uh, the likes of Norwich and Watford are also in action uh, today uh, when you watch this video, or tomorrow, depending on when you watch this. And I think if Norwich win, they can go above us. Uh, Watford as well, they're a decent side, and we've got to play them next week. So, you know, on the road, it's not going to be difficult. The next two games are on the road, and we haven't got a good track record, so... But yeah, as I said, I just don't know where the next win's coming from. You know, I look at individual performances yesterday. I think, for, you know, I'm frustrated a little bit at St. Max when, yes, he scored the goal in that, but there's just times where he gets the ball and he tries to charge at too many players and he gets caught so many times and um, he gives up the ball and then the opposition are on the counter-attack. I feel like he's got to make that extra pass sometimes or if he gets in a good in a good position where he's got a better opportunity of scoring, just go for it. Like, don't, you know, waste time because you can't afford to waste time you know, in the Premier League with with the quality on show of all the sides that you're up against. Uh, I thought Darlow uh, played very well uh, yesterday, made some fantastic saves uh, when he was called upon. He can actually catch a ball in like Freddie Woodman. Uh, I feel more comfortable when Darlow or Dubravka play. And um, I feel like Darlow's only going to get better uh, over the course of this season. He could be very uh, key to trying to pick us some points up. But um, so, yeah, like I say, all, all in all, um, Joe Linton's still not I'm still not right with him at the minute he's, I'm, I just beg us believe how he gets games I don't care how much he costs he just doesn't do enough for me doesn't get in the box anywhere near enough and I felt like Dwight Gill should have at least got half an hour last night and didn't and I'm sure Steve Bruce is going to look upon that in reflection that's if he does reflect because uh, he frustrates us but uh, to say that the game yesterday was exciting might have been for Leeds because they're the away side but the fact that we didn't do a great deal in the game um I still think we need to improve uh, in many aspects, especially in, I say, in that final third of why we're going to struggle. It's as simple as that. Uh, I couldn't put it any more simpler than that, but it's up to the, the manager to change things. It's up to you know, the coaches to try and get the best out of the players in the training, and obviously the players need to be uh, interested. But when you haven't got a great coach managing you, then I think that's very, very difficult, and that's understandable to why the players are probably not playing at the levels that we expect of them. Um, I said it's been... You know, a frustrating start to the season. You expect us to be on more points by now, but listen, it is what it is. We can't change it. Um, yeah, I can blame Mike Dean as much as I like, but the players have still got to take the initiative as well. And it was just one of those nights where, you know, Bruce chants out, and I still want him out. I want him gone. Um, he shouldn't even be here. I think he's just wasting his time. It doesn't matter whether he says he doesn't want to walk or anything like that, but the more games that we'll lose or the least points we're picking up, he's there for the sack, you know what I mean? He's, it's going to happen. Um, Mike Ashley eventually will panic and pull the trigger depends when that is wouldn't surprise us if it's around March and then we'll panic and we'll get relegated but uh, I should be positive with a point I probably am and I'm also not because at the CL, I'm at home I want to win games you know that's why you're in in football you know you want to win games you want to you know, try and pick up as many points as possible you can't always be satisfied uh, with a draw I would probably be more satisfied with a draw if we went like on the road or if we played like a top six side but when you played at home I feel like yesterday we missed a trick, uh, especially in that second half. But uh, listen, it is what it is. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Uh, be sure to like the channel uh, or like the video, shall I say. Uh, subscribe and uh, I will see you all in the next one for Watford away. Uh, check out the Match Day vlog next Sunday. In the meantime, how are the lads?